Well, I managed not to press the right button, so I didn't record this, so I'm recording it now. <clears throat> this is Yom Yom for today, Friday, sixth day of Tavis. <clears throat> Sayings <clears throat> of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe gathered and put into a pamphlet by the his successor. Know the God of your fathers and serve him with a whole heart. It's a sentence from <clears throat> uh, Chronicles. Know the God of your fathers and serve him with a whole heart. Da es elokei avicha v'avdeho b'lev shalem. So you just have to know God and you have to also serve him and it has to be serving him with your heart. Every sort of Torah knowledge and comprehension, even the most profound <clears throat> Kabbalistic ideas, ideas of, of morality, of ethics, but it has to come out into avoda. Now, what does avoda mean? Avoda means service. So there's an idea of serving God. What does God need? <clears throat> God is everything, right? So it's not, not exactly. God needs for us to do what he wants. And that's up to our free will. And also we have to do it the way he wants. That's also up to our free will. And that changing yourself to do what God wants, the way that he wants, <clears throat> and even more to do it with love and to do it with awe, do it with faith. And there's no end to the depth of these three because <clears throat> we're connecting to God. That's called avoda. Avoda means changing yourself. Changing yourself, changing the world around you, but especially changing yourself. That's what he's talking about, with your whole heart. Your intellectual attainments, your ideas, your philosophies, your, your, your conclusions, your awarenesses have to bring about an actual refinement and improvement of character traits. <coughs> Excuse me. It must be translated into a deep-rooted inward attachment to God. This is called avoda. Usually it's brought in, the, the best example of this is tanning leather hides. <clears throat> the process of tanning means you take a piece of leather, which leather, if you've ever seen it, if you leave it out, <clears throat> like outside, <clears throat> then uh, it becomes hard. It becomes hard like a rock. So how do you make shoes and, and safer Torahs and things like that out of it? So you have to do a process which is called tanning. They put it in some sort of special, whatever it is, liquid, soak it in something, and it becomes permanently changed. The nature becomes changed. That's what a vote is, permanently changing our nature. So nature. So learning Torah is not just good enough that it changes your understanding. You become a big professor in Judaism, <clears throat> and you become a big, how do you say, a religious person. It has to change your heart so you have more love more awe, more hum humility. Okay, that's today's. Let's do tomorrow's. Okay, this is a little bit scary, <clears throat> but what can we do? That's life or afterlife. I told you this before, but I'll tell it again. In the 50s, there were students, groups of students, college students, Jewish college students that came in <clears throat> to, uh, that were brought in actually to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And they didn't know anything about Judaism. They certainly didn't know what a Rebbe was or anything. And they asked the Rebbe very innocent, simple questions. One of the questions was, does Judaism believe in life after death? So the Rebbe said, well, really, Judaism doesn't really believe in death. Just different forms of life. There's life in the body and life outside of the body. Okay, but suffice it to say that before the soul comes into the body, <clears throat> it's pure. And, and when it comes into the body, so it gets active and has all these obligations and responsibilities. And after it leaves the body, so if it didn't fulfill these obligations and whatever, so it realizes its mistake. And that mistake is very painful. And that's two ways. One of them is called the chibut hakever, the purgatory of the grave. And the other one is called kafa kelo, the slingshot. <clears throat> one is the purgatory of the grave, the worms eat you up or whatever. <clears throat> of course, this only happens to the body, but because you're connected to your body, 
You want to avoid these things? Want to avoid it? Recite words of Torah and prayer for one-sixth of the day. In other words, what is it? Four hours. Huh? Four hours of the day. <clears throat> Try to say words of Torah. You want to get... Maybe some people get leniencies. I don't know. I mean, listen, nowadays... The sins that people do now are 99.9% .9 out of ignorance <clears throat> and pure pressure and all sorts of other things. So nevertheless, there are these purification, refinement processes that go after a person dies. You want to, <clears throat> um, uh, how do you say, uh, mitigate them, uh, alleviate them or whatever. So say words of Torah, say to them for one-sixth of the day. If you want to avoid what's called the slingshot, which the soul feels like it's being shot like a hundred, you know, like going into an elevator shaft and just there's no elevator there. <clears throat> you want to avoid that, which who does who wouldn't want to avoid a thing like that? To spend as much of the day as you can saying things by heart, Mishnah, Tanya, Tehillim, <clears throat> by heart. And that will alleviate you <clears throat> from the pains of the purgatory of the, after you die. Have a good have a good day. Have a good Shabbat with Mashiach now. Oh man, I hope not. <clears throat>